thought I was done framing and I was gonna jump in on mounting the solar panels on top. And then I was looking at the framing in the front up here. It's kind of sagging a little bit and it's not attached anymore. So I think I need to, I need to do one more rib along the front here to really support that front section where the solar panels are gonna mount to. It's really awkward working in the small pull-out bed area of the van above the cab. Uh, this is gonna be fun. I cut the ends of the existing framing flush so I could attach the new rib to the ends of them. I'm not quite sure how this was all supported originally. It seemed pretty weak. I thought the best way to make the new ribs strong and support the roof well is to have them tie into the plywood glued to the sides. It'll protrude a little when it's all said and done, but I'll take having that if it means a strong roof. It took a couple tries to get the shape of the new rib just right, but I eventually got it to fit snugly. I made a second rib and glued them together for even more strength, and then sunk some screws through the old framing to tie it all together. I was really glad I took the time to do it. I felt a lot better about mounting the solar panels to the roof after this. I picked up a 200 watt solar panel kit from Renogy. After doing some research, Renogy seemed kind of like the go-to for van conversions and RVs. It's a pretty cool kit. Came with everything I needed to get set up right. I'll put links down in the description if you want to check them out. These affiliate links give a little kickback to the channel too is much appreciated. Attached to the mounting brackets to the holes, which would match up with the 16 inch on center framing inside the van. Previous owners glued and duct tape a cheap flexible panel down, so I had to get it all cleaned up first. Hopefully my mounting job won't require any duct tape. Once I knew roughly where the first hole was going, I drilled it from the underside so I could make sure it was centered on the rafter. And then drilled the other three holes from the top with the solar panel in place. Each aluminum bracket has two holes about three inches apart, and since the second hole wouldn't have a rib underneath it, I cut some small blocks that I could glue in place underneath and bolt through. And this actually worked perfect for filling in a small gap between the wood and the fiberglass as well. I know fiberglass is strong, but I'm still always nervous about cracking it. I'm also nervous about all these new holes in the roof leaking. So I carefully caulked each hole before bolting the solar panel in place. I was an idiot and forgot to cut the zip ties holding the cables underneath before I mounted the panel. But I eventually dug them out and got them hooked together in parallel. With the front half of the roof done, I figured it would make sense to get the back half fixed up as well. But before I work on that, I want to talk about the sponsor of this video, Audible. On the farm I spend a lot of time in the driver's seats of tractors, trucks, and pickups. And listening to audiobooks has become my favorite way to get off the farm, learn something new, and inspire my creativity. Audible has an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, and comedy. An audiobook that Kelly and I both love is set in her home country of Ireland. Here's Dublin, where we fly into. Here's where Kelly lives. And then way down here in the corner of the country is a small town called Skull, where a real-life murder happened two days before Christmas in 1996. West Cork is a true crime podcast miniseries produced by Audible, 
that does a deep dive into the fascinating characters and suspects tangled up in this story. Kelly and I can't recommend it enough. Go to www.audible.com slash rainfallprojects or text rainfallprojects to 500, 500 and you can get three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month. You get to choose one audiobook and two Audible originals. That's more than half off the regular price, and this is for a limited time only. I'm very excited to have Audible support because it's a service I'm constantly using, and it's so easy to genuinely recommend. Thanks, Audible. Maybe it was just the fact that it was pouring rain outside, but I wanted to work on making sure the rest of the roof was sealed up as well. I unscrewed the tie-down bar, which was definitely a source of leaks previously. Quite a few of these screws were stripped and doing nothing, as the wood underneath them had rotted away. I thought I would give it a couple coats of paint while I was at it. I removed the AC on top of the van, which was very heavy and awkward. It wasn't working. We'll probably just have to get a new one. We're thinking about getting one with the heat pump as well, for when we're hooked up to power. I don't know if it was necessary or not, but I decided to run the two wires from the solar panels through conduit to give them a little extra protection. Before I reattached the roof railing, I glued new wood blocks in place on the inside where it was needed and caulked each hole. Man, I'm just so paranoid about roof leaks. I'm really hoping I can get it all sealed up tight. We get a lot of rain here in Oregon. I used some RV roof sealant tape over some existing screw holes that weren't being used. This was pretty cool stuff. It seemed like it was gonna work well. I trimmed back the top of the conduit leaving it sticking out about half an inch before feeding the wires through. It took some work but I got them out of the juncture box at the bottom. I put some sealant in and around the conduit before gluing the cable entry housing box in place. I put some weight on it to keep it pressed in place while the adhesive dried. I also have the charge controller, two big batteries, and an inverter but I won't be installing that until later on. The van had three plumbing vents coming out of the top, one of which was for the tiny bathtub that I won't be needing anymore. So I cut a round plug to fill in the hole and taped over it. The other two vent holes I bought new covers for, which I caulked and got screwed down. Had a little bit of water damage around this window, so I'm going to work on patching that in this morning. I'm cut out a template.
for the window to seal tight, it was important to use the same thickness of plywood. Luckily, I had a piece. Next, I moved on to running more electrical on the inside. I put together a wiring diagram for the van and just started checking things off one at a time. I'm just running the wires that need to go inside the walls right now. There'll be more to do once the cabinets are in place and the van is a little further along. It's hard because I still don't know exactly where everything will go. I'm just trying to get things close enough that I can make it work later on. I also wanted to install the backup camera on the back of the van. It's pretty hard to see back there when you're in the driver's seat. This meant more holes in the roof. Oh well. I took the time to label everything. I know it'll get a lot more confusing where everything goes once I get the walls covered. Starting to look a little crazy inside here, with wires going everywhere. But I think I have it under control. I think. <laughs> <laughs> 